evening. This is Money and Markets. Welcome to the show. I'm Shamim K. Matovu. And I'm Charles Boji. Now, the shilling has received some fairly good buttering in 2022. However, as we enter 2023, it's beginning on a fairly good, strong note against major international currencies. And tonight, we speak to one of the traders to help us share some projections for 2023. <music> The shilling opened the new year of 2023 in January, trading at levels of 3715, 3725. Uh, overall, uh, we expect an economic recovery in 2023. Most people are optimistic, uh, though we still have the ongoing global factors that continue to impact us. Uh, that's the Russia-Ukraine war and we have imported inflation still uh, coming through, uh, keeping our inflation numbers still relatively high. That's still likely to continue affecting businesses. But overall, we are optimistic that 2023 will probably be better than what we saw in 2022 if global factors can stabilize. For the month of January, we saw a quiet start in terms of activity as uh, clients and market players were starting to resume activities again after the festivities. Uh, start of the month, the shilling was a bit weak at levels of 3715, uh, 3725. Currently, we're trading at levels of 3675, uh, 3685 with the shilling marginally strong. Uh, we saw some inflows. Uh, towards the end of the month that are coming in from the usual NGOs, commodity exporters and other sectors. But then there's also a, a slight pickup in demand uh, from corporates as they resume activities from the energy, manufacturing and all the other sectors. Uh, usual month end inflows are trickling into the market, though we are seeing some pockets of corporate demand, but these are being balanced uh, by the inflows coming through. At the moment we are trading at levels of 3675, 3685 and are likely to close the month still trading within levels of 3650 and 3710. Uh, at the moment, shilling overall is still weak uh, because of global factors. So for those who are buying dollars, it's still a little expensive for them in terms of dollar purchases. For dollar sellers, uh, they are getting a benefit uh, with the slightly weak shilling. We should see more pickup in activity uh, coming through, especially with the back to school uh, season also setting in. So we may see a, a pickup in demand and this may definitely affect uh, the clients who buy dollars if the shilling uh, continues to weaken. Uh, during the month of February, uh, most of the offices should have fully resumed. Uh, we expect activity to pick up in the market. Uh, overall, shilling is anticipated uh, to trade within levels of 36.30 and uh, 37.70. We did not have any monetary policy committee meeting during the month of January. The next MPC meeting is tentatively scheduled for the 6th of February, 2023. So for the month of January, uh, the central bank rate was still at 10%. You are a farmer. You can access money through a bank, but is it affordable and is it appropriate? If you got money to grow coffee, the appropriateness is in terms of when are you supposed to pay back? Does it match? Does the loan match with the gestation period of the crop? Financing is just one of the many challenges that farmers have to put up with in the country today. The farmers' challenges begin right from the farm all the way through the value chain to the market. It is the aspiration to rein in these challenges and change the farmers' fortunes who remain the majority economic group in the country that is now bringing together agencies, both public 
and private. Action agreement as a mechanism that will uh, uh, guide the way we operate with our stakeholders, especially uh, those involved in production, aggregation, standardization and uh, post-harvest handling to those who are doing warehousing and then we do the warehouse receipting at that level. So signed with um, the Uganda Cooperative Alliance, the Green Council of Uganda, Uganda Farmers Federation, and ourselves, Uganda Warehouse Receipt System Authority. Through the agreement, government seeks to reach the farmer at the grassroots, but most importantly, to be able to guide on produce standards, which today remains a big inhibitor of farmers' benefit. For instance, a few years back, Kenya turned down Ugandan grain over quality issues and specifically high aflatoxin levels. Much of the grain uh, becomes contaminated at the farm. Because this poor farmer, you know, we really need to applaud them. This poor farmer has no space, has no capacity to clean and maintain and ease the grain to make sure that it is free of the aflatoxins. Now, with this intervention, they will know that once I harvest, I don't have to store. If it needs a drying, I go to the warehouse owner, and the warehouse owner cannot cheat me because the regulator warehouse authority is observing. To government, the signed framework agreement to address most of the value chain challenges will not be met by a single player, more so the farmer. We agreed officially to work together, like we've been trying to work together. And our job, our work is going to involve sensitizing people about standards, about the benefits of aggregating. Then we find mechanisms of storing, cleaning, drying, and uh, standardizing the commodities, including the infrastructure where those commodities are kept. Then we shall go into now the warehouse receipting. Transforming agriculture is a Herculean task, given the number of processes and players involved, including the farmer, the storekeeper, the middleman, the processor, the financier, the insurer, among others. This gives currency to today's framework agreement, but only as a stepping stone to bring on board more critical stakeholders, especially financers. <music>